Why did I arrive in Vilcabamba? What, what yeah. brought me to Vilcabamba? Right. You know, if it wasn't for Dr. Dayton, I would not be here. Right. My, my family, very small family, my mom, my dad, my sister and I, we left Rio de Janeiro and we moved to Chicago. Okay. And then I just started, you know, the life in the United States of America. Uh, going to school, uh, going to high school, a couple of years in college, then the military service. I did the military service. So you went to Vietnam, that's where that's you started. Yeah, and then, so correct. we had a nice discussion about that because, as you know, my dad is from Vietnam and I lived there uh -huh. for almost 10 years. Yeah. And uh, then normal life, you know, you have to get a job, you have to work, you have to make a living. So you, you got back from Vietnam, you were a paramedics, right? Yes. And so you, 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 you stayed there for a couple of years? No, Do, uh, 16 months. 16 months, during the war? That was enough. Okay. That, <laughs> was enough. Yeah, exactly. that was more than enough. Yes, that was more than yeah. enough for me. And then, of course, I left the military, I left uh, the service. And I got a job in New York City and um, just lived a normal USA life, mm -hmm. getting a job and uh, got married. Uh, I had a daughter in my first marriage. And then things happened in my life, uh, things happened to everybody's life. Yeah. And eventually I had a compromised uh, immune system in 1983 and uh, I decided to go to Peru to find my roots in Peru, in Iquitos, Peru, by the Amazon River, because I wanted to get better and allopathic medicine was not doing it for me in the United States. So I went to Peru to do a completely natural process of, uh, of trying to get my health back, especially reactivating my immune system. So I lived in Peru for six years. Uh, then uh, my father called me when I was in Iquitos. He was uh, living in Miami Beach at that time. And he said, son, what about coming back and spending some time with me? So I said, sure. I think I had enough of uh, the rainforest by that time. So in 1989, after six years in, in Iquitos, Peru, in the surrounding areas, I went back to, to the U.S. and I was living with my father in Miami Beach. And I met um, to a very cosmic situation Mm -hmm. A wonderful man, uh, his name is Dr. Martin Dayton, mm -hmm. and he has a holistic clinic. And Dr. Dayton Martin became very much interested in my research in, in Peru, in Iquitos, in the rainforest of Peru. And we started working together in different type of uh, formulations and, and raw materials from, from the rainforest to create uh, natural medicine. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Dayton was a, a key ingredient in my life, uh, putting me on a path of, of natural medicine and phytotherapy and using the, the botanicals found in Peru uh, to improve a person's health mm -hmm. and well-being. So Dr. Dayton, after a number of years working with him, he asked me to come and visit the small valley of Vilcabamba in Ecuador. Interesting because if it wasn't for Dr. Dayton, I never would arrive here in Vilcabamba. So he wanted to have me come over to Vilcabamba uh, to explore the lifestyle of the very, very, very old people of this valley. So upon arriving in Vilcabamba, at that particular time, this was 1991. Mm -hmm. This was really rustico. There were no cars, no bus, there was just one bus once a day to Loja, a city 45 minutes north of Vilcabamba. But what caught me about Vilcabamba was uh, the extreme rustico life. Uh, people rode horses, they rode mules, uh, people worked in the fields, they worked in the mountains. And uh, the reason that Dr. Dayton sent me here was to observe the lifestyle of the very, very old people. And after spending three years in the valley of Vilcabamba, I came to the conclusion that their health, uh, the physical and mental acuity had to do with their nutrition, the water they drank, and nutrition meaning that the food that the valley and the mountains produce uh, came from very rich soil, mm -hmm. full of minerals. The water they drank 
the same thing. And they were full of minerals, especially germanium and selenium. Mm -hmm. Germanium and selenium. So that kept these folks really healthy. Uh, amazing mental acuity. Uh, I saw a woman once, she must have been in the late 90s, uh, just grab a needle and a thread and just like nothing, just go through it. Mm. And th th that was amazing. You know, no, no, yeah. no eyeglasses. Yeah. Uh, amazing. No hearing yeah. aids. No hearing aids. Also, the fact of the matter, at that particular time, things like diabetes, uh, cardiovascular problems, yeah. respiratory problems, dementia, Alzheimer's, was completely unknown. Yeah. Completely unknown. Yeah. Now, these are both men and women in, in, in very advanced age. Uh, they were riding horses, they were riding mules, they went for firewood every day, they cooked, they sewed. Um, mm -hmm. their, their particular dwellings, they were mostly made out of adobe and they made their own adobe. Yeah. They made their own adobe. Uh, they had uh, an, an extremely intricate lifestyle. And they had a drink called horchata. And I just researched an horchata mm -hmm for the University of Southern Illinois in Carbondale and the combination of, of botanicals for their chata and the, and the flower petals that were used, mm -hmm. uh, they've also had a profound effect on their health. Uh, this combination of plants uh, had um, properties for uh, hypertension, for example, uh, for a good uh, blood cleanser, you know, mm -hmm. eliminating to the kidneys. So orchata was very important for them, and every single family had a different recipe for orchata. It was very interesting. So they made their own orchata? They made their own orchata. They grew the plants, mm -hmm. they made their own orchata, and every family had their own little recipe for that. So that would be like a herbal tea? Mm-hmm. It's yeah. an herbal tea. It has maybe 20, 20 25 plants. Uh, for each yes. of the formulas, they use about mm -hmm. that amount of plants. Mm -hmm. so yeah, they, they, they live in combining hot plants with cold plants. And things like that. So it was very interesting for me to learn that. Uh, so there was a very interesting research on orchata. So and obviously, they were growing their own food mm -hmm. in the veg garden. Yeah. Was there any plants that were always in common within the recipes? Yeah, color de caballo, uh, uh, manzanilla, mm -hmm. uh, lemongrass, mm -hmm. uh, cedron. Yeah. Uh, the the, the orange leaf, I've heard. Yeah, there were, there were, there were plants that. that uh, Basically speaking, that uh, that most of the formulas had those plants in, but then everybody had their own little touch, you know, yeah. their own little of touch of this, yeah. own touch of that. Family recipe. Yeah. Family recipe. Family family. secret. Yeah. Uh, so so we lived here in the valley uh, for three years, 91, 92, 93, and um, came to the conclusion that the good health and mental acuity of the old people, elderly people had to do with, with the food they drank, with the food they ate, and the water they drank, mm -hmm. and also the herbs they took. Mm -hmm. the, their nutrition was very little meat. It was mostly chicken, eggs, and cheese. Mm -hmm. uh, well, maybe twice a year they killed uh, a, a pig, yeah. and a uh, no, big pig. Yeah. Uh, but mostly there was n almost no red meat. Okay. No red meat. It was beans, peas, bananas, yucca, yeah. Uh, and the milk, of course, what they made uh, fabulous cheese. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so their, di their, their diet was, yeah. uh, was uh, to me, uh, something that allowed them to live long, plus their physical exercise. Yeah. These folks worked every day. They were yeah. not lying around watching television yeah. or, or listening to the radio. The time is changing or, right now. I just or, yeah, yeah. On the computer. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Yeah. And so Alcohol was uh, were, were they drinking wine like for example like in Italia no, no, in they, Greece they, or in no, Sardinia? They, they, no, they drank uh, aguardiente. Aguardiente. Moonshine. Yeah. A lot. From the sugar cane. No, a lot. Is it strong in alcohol? <sighs> Very yeah. strong. Mm. Very strong. So yes. the habit was once a day they would gather and. and no, there's have only drink? Sundays. Sundays. Ah, okay. okay. They only drank Sundays, but they also drank a lot of coffee. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Vilcabamba uh, produces very good coffee. And they smoked uh, the, tobacco. the the local tobacco yeah. called chamico, chamico, uh, which is uh, completely natural. Yeah. And they made like uh, um, cigars out of that. Yeah. And so they smoked that. But the coffee is a is a big thing. This morning we had the chance to meet uh, Senor uh, Jose, who is uh -huh. uh, next month 110, and he was saying that he's drinking a lot of coffee. coffee still right now, he's still yeah. like three people, coffees per day. People even drink coffee here at night. <laughs> yeah. 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 
Yeah. And how about cacao? Do they no, there's no cacao, cacao here. No, no cacao does not grow here. Because you were saying the other time also, and we met uh, the, 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 the Belgium uh, gentleman, uh, mm -hmm. José, is also doing uh, uh, cacao here. And cacao is, uh, Ecuador is really famous. Mm -hmm. and, and there are three major plants in, in Ecuador. Um, oh, yeah, can you speak about them? Yeah, coca, uh, cacao, and tobacco. Okay, so there, there are three, uh, three uh, master plants, yeah. plantas yeah. sagradas, in, Planta in Ecuador, sagradas, also in Peru. Yeah. By the way, Peru and Ecuador are very, very similar in culture. Mm -hmm. So the three master plants of plantas sagradas are uh, there's the, the cacao mm -hmm. tree, there's the coca bush, and the tobacco bush. Mm -hmm. These three plants are crucial for uh, medicine, they're crucial for well being and nutrition. Mm -hmm. So these three plants are, are very much embodied in the Andes culture of Peru and Ecuador. Uh, but obviously, time has gone by and, and, and things have happened to, mm -hmm. to, to, the, to the belief system. But uh, yes, the three major ma okay. plantas maestras or master plants, or plantas sagradas, yes. and these yeah. are the three. Yeah. But you were saying like uh, cacao, sorry, so uh, we're, we're not uh, in, in, in that time, in the early 90s, people were not uh, taking a lot of uh, cacao. Well, not here because it doesn't grow here. Okay. But on the coast, yes. Yeah. Yeah. On the coast, it's very much part of their lifestyle, cacao, because uh, the cacao de fino aroma, uh, which is unique to Ecuador, uh, and because of its cacao butter content, yeah. which is highest in the world, yeah. uh, is very much part of the coastal culture of Ecuador, cacao. Even you can see ceramics, um, pre-Columbian ceramics, okay. Uh, going back to the certain cultures in, uh, on the coast of Ecuador, okay. the province of Manabi, uh, you see the pre-Columbian ceramics depicting the cacao fruit, and also they use uh, certain vessels for the preparation of cacao. Okay. Cacao doesn't come from Mexico, hello. Mm -hmm. Cacao <laughs> comes from Ecuador. Okay. It was taken to Mexico by the trade routes of pre-Columbian cultures. Okay. Okay. Yes, I was going to ask you about the water and yeah. its properties. Can you uh, talk a little bit further on that? The, prop uh, the water in Vilcabamba? Yes. Because uh, the way that the, the valley of, of Vilcabamba is situated, geographically speaking, uh, we are the base of the Cordillera de los Andes, which means the Andes yes. Mountains. Uh, in, in this case, it goes up to 4,000 meters, uh, these mountains above uh, Vilcabamba, uh, the valley of Vilcabamba. So, uh, this is a cloud forest, yeah. right. and, and uh, there are 600 lagoons that the rain from the clouds feed these lagoons. 600 uh, lagoons, wow. 600 yeah, lagoons. Yeah, you were telling us Document, yeah. document. Yeah. So this water filters out from the lagoons into, into the streams, small streams, and up in the two major rivers, which is the Chamba mm -hmm. and the Uchima River. The mm -hmm. Uchima River and the Chamba River flow into the valley of Ilcabamba. And this water is a... a Pure, sure, yeah. pure, pristine because uh, it's uh, there's no mining, there's yeah. no logging. Uh, it, uh, still, the mountains above Vilcabamba is called the Podocarpos, Podocarpos, uh, Podocarpos yeah. Valley or mountain or retreat or reserve. reserve. Mm. So this water filters through a pristine environment and ends up ends up in, in the valley of Vilcabamba, mm. and it is full of minerals. It is full of uh, germanium, selenium. Um, uh, Magnesium, etc., etc., etc. So this is a very, very healthful water. Mm. Would it bring also uh, gold properties or silver properties? We've heard there's some uh, gold and silver nearby. Well, not so much silver, gold, yes. Gold. And uh, mm -hmm. things like cobalt and uranium, in, you know, in its natural state. Right, right. Mm -hmm. In a natural state. So this water is picking up all this, all these micro minerals, all these micro nutrients, yeah, and, yeah. and, and and it's coming down. And and, yeah. and at that time, uh, the people just put their buckets in the, in the river and, yeah. and, and, and yeah. grab the water and drink yeah. that water. How was a normal day for each of these uh, local villagers? Well, they get up very early in the morning, they cook with firewood, uh, earthenware vessels, uh, they, of course they make their coffee, uh, they'll have uh, eggs, uh, some chicken, some soup. Made for the morning? Of, yeah, some, they, they really fed themselves very so well. So no intermittent fasting for them at the time. They were they were, they were eating a, they, you know, a they lot. They get up before nice 35 o'clock yeah. in the morning, they eat like yeah. soup made out of banana yeah. and cheese and, and, and eggs and maybe a piece of chicken. And um, they off they go on their mule or horses up in the mountains 
to tend their beans or their peas or their lentils. And uh, yeah. corn? Corn also. also. Yeah. No. But most of it was the legumes. Okay. The legumes. They, they would live uh, with the sun. They would. They would. Um, oh yeah. They Check would be with totally sunrise. synchronized yeah. with with, uh, with sunlight. Yeah. They 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 would go about that time in the morning after after a hearty breakfast, and they spend most of the day, and then would be back by four four thirty in the afternoon. Would they have lunch in the mean in the meantime? But probably they would take something. I'm not quite sure what you know what they took, but they probably would take something. Mm -hmm. They call it merienda. Right. You know, merienda. So yeah. something they would take yeah. up there, okay. and to eat, uh, I imagine it would be like. Um, Tamales mm -hmm. or umitas, they're, they're corn cakes, mm -hmm. and the tamales are uh, delicious, uh, I personally love them. <laughs> and they would be filled either with pork or chicken, peas, um, or the umita would be just a, a, like a cheesecake, yeah. you okay. know, made out of corn and, and cheese, mm -hmm. wrapped in and, and yeah, corn leaf. To, to nourish them and stuff them. For and then, yeah. you know, maybe they would make a fire up there and take okay. some coffee right, with them. Right. But uh, and then they would come back down around 4, 4.30, and they would have a hearty, hearty, hearty yeah. uh, cena, mm -hmm. which is uh, dinner, and uh, and they would go to sleep early. And the way they slept, uh, which was another That's thing interesting that also, uh, also observe, is that mo most of their homes were packed dirt, mm -hmm. no cement, packed dirt, really packed dirt, and they would put on the packed dirt planks of wood, yeah, on top of on it. top of that, and then folded blankets. And then they would sleep like that. Some would and have. You, you've tried that. Yeah, you, know, you told us. I did. I, I slept the, there you, for, you, for you about sleep eight months. was good. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it's very good for for the back. Yeah. And but some of them would have uh, very uh, rustic beds, but no mattresses. Okay. They would have just the planks of wood, and then the folded blankets, and they would sleep like that. Okay. And uh, the very small homes, uh, almost no windows. Okay. Uh, that's, that's, that's did they spend a lot of time in the home? Not really. Not, Not really, really, right? Just sleeping. Yeah. Right. Outdoor life. Yeah. yeah. Mostly they would have okay. like a like a like a like a like a roof extending from the house where they would have their kitchen and outside. The, outside. Yeah. And they would have their firewood there. They would cook like that, and then they would go home just uh, just, okay. just just to sleep. And was the bathroom outside as well? The bathroom was always outside. Okay. Just uh, just outside. Just. Um, an outhouse. Right, right. Richard, can you, can, can you tell us, sorry, can you tell us about the electromagnetics of Vilcabamba, especially of that uh, sacred mountain, uh, Mondango, which is right here. Uh, you were saying like Japanese came in this in the 70s or so. Okay, so some, some when, when I arrived in Vilcabamba, uh, I needed to have some kind of reference point. So I made friends uh, with the hospital director. Uh, his name was Dr. Guillermo del Pozo. A uh, very nice man, very kind man. And uh, Dr. Guillermo del Pozo was a cardiologist, and he studied car cardiology in Japan, so mm -hmm. he spoke uh, Japanese. And Dr. del Pozo told me that just before I arrived, the Japanese were here like for a couple of years, uh, let's say 18, 19, 1989, 1990, and what the Japanese did is uh, they set up sensors in what we call the sacred mountain of Vilcabamba, which is called Mandango. And they set up the sensors in, on the mountain, Mandango Mountain, and they were able to determine through their sensors and their technology at the time, uh, extreme heavy electromagnetic action in the valley of Vilcabamba. Uh, also, the valley was always flooded with negative ions due to the electrical discharges. And it was amazing, you can, sit out here 10, 11 o'clock at night and you could see the electrical discharges all around Mandango Mountain. Yeah. So the Japanese uh, scientists uh, came to the conclusion that these electrical discharges, this electromagnetic grid here at Vilcabamba, help people uh, be tranquil, yeah. relaxed. Yeah. Uh, it calm nervous yeah, system. Yeah. affects the, the cardiovascular system yeah. as well as the central nervous system. So that to me, and it still happens to this day, not as much, mm -hmm. not as much, but it definitely people come to Vilcabamba in a couple of days a year, yeah. I feel like sleepy, yeah. I feel relaxed. We felt that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's unique. Yeah. It's unique in Vilcabamba, but it does happen. Yeah. It does happen. Okay. Double check. Okay. And the other one is still running also? Yeah. Nice, super nice. And, um, 
we address something else, Susanna? Mm -hmm. How's your bite? My back? Ba bites. 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 See? Almost gone. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. It's a good answer. <laughs> no more. No, no more, more itching. It's no gone. More itching. I know. <laughs> Thank oh. you for that. So many people, I tell you. So many yeah. people say, God, this really works. It works. It yeah. works, yeah. It's very simple, but it works. It's a, it's a secret formula, formula of yours, right? Yeah, it's not that secret, but yeah. uh, mo mostly, you know, herbs that the, you what, what is the main herb on tea? Tobacco. 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 Wow. Tobacco. Wow. Tobacco. Huh. Tobacco leaves. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh well. <laughs> you know a lemongrass? Mm, yeah. I love it. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah, actually okay. in uh, Thailand they use a lot of lemongrass. For yeah. Well, lemongrass is citronella. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, so they extract citronella from lemongrass and they put in candles and blah, 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 yeah. blah. Right. Is this running or no? Yes, yeah. it's running. Oh, it's running. Okay. No, we'll cut it. We'll cut it. Yeah. You want to ask uh, one last thing or a couple of things? Um, Yes, I'm very interested about the activities they did for pleasure, for fun and community activities. Mm, community, yeah. Well, you, you have to understand, the, the, these, these folks, at that time, it, it has gotten better. This is a, my observation. This is just a clinical observation. There was a lot of machismo going on here. Mm -hmm. So the man controlled the women. So there wasn't much uh, partying. Uh, they were very, actually, they lived kind of a sad life because uh, enjoyment was not something that they pursued. Mm. Uh, obviously, it's so different today. You know. But occasionally there was a dance, uh, some kind of holiday or something, and there was a dance in town. But uh, usually there were more younger people than the older people. The old people were very conservative. Very, very conservative. And when you said old people, Richard, you at that time you realized that there was as many uh, women uh, reaching advanced age as uh, yeah, as, uh, as, uh, as men. It was both, it was both men and women. It was equal. It was equal. But uh, there was not much entertainment for them. It was a very, very. It was a very hardy life. You know, they were mostly busy with their crops, mm -hmm. uh, going up to their small plots on, on horseback and, or muleback. This is every day. Sunday was the only day that they relax and they drink. Yeah. Right. Punta, which is, which is moonshine, which is caña. Mm. Uh, and the women just kept with their chores, you know, cooking, sewing, attending the children, attending the animals, yeah. right, the chickens or the pigs that they had. Did you work with them at the time in the early 90s when you stayed for three years here? What, 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 were, you day, uh, what were you doing during the day? I mean, beside the studies you were, you were pursuing at the time, did you spend some, some time in the fields with them? Or? Yeah, I did that. You know, I went up to see the, the chakras, they call chakras, uh, the, the fingers, chakras, mm -hmm. the little plots the farms. The farms. The farms. The farms yeah. um, if, if, you know, just getting there by horseback, you know, it took an hour and a half, two hours. Wow. Wow. Oh, yeah. And, and then back at the same time. Yeah, right. And sometimes, you know, they brought their milk down to make their cheese. But mostly what I did is just um, my daily routine was to, to live like they did, firewood, you know, cook our food like that, uh, because that's how I began to understand how they lived. Mm -hmm. The experiment. So I imagine right. every day, you know, chopping up firewood. Making the fire took about half an hour to get the fire going and make the coffee mm -hmm. and then make our food that we're going to eat daily. And when uh, we interviewed people, that's what we did most of the day. We walked around, we, we walked up the mountains, we came back down, we went to the river. Uh, we saw women washing clothes, talked to them, uh, how, their, how was their lives. They're not very happy. I mean, if you want to cut that off, maybe. <laughs> but they're not very, I, I didn't find a lot of smiling faces. Mm -hmm. The younger people, yes, and the younger people were beginning to change at that time, mm. um, trying to go to, to school, trying to go to university. They didn't want to live their rustic life. They were not interested in that. Mm. And now, nobody. Everybody wants to get an education. Everybody wants to go to Quito or Guayaquil or Cuenca or even Loja, go to university. So that old style of yeah, rustical yeah. life is just about to speak. It's gone, yeah. So their emotional side 
um, how do you think they handled with all that hardship? They're not happy. I know they're not happy. And um, the women how about happy. faith? Do you think it compensated yeah. a little bit on that? The what? Spirituality, faith. faith in God. Well, it was also mostly mechanical. Uh, because uh, Ecuador is a very Catholic country. Yeah. So they went to church every Sunday. They confessed against... Only once a, w a week? Yeah, also only yeah. once a week. Yeah, because they didn't have much time during the week. Mm -hmm. There was not, you know, chopping firewood, make, making the food, washing the clothes, they had to bring the clothes down to the river. Right. Yeah. There was no indoor plumbing. Right, yeah. <laughs> good old times. There was no indoor plumbing. Yeah. So the women had to bring loads and loads of wash to the river and spend two or three hours just pounding the clothes on the rocks and, and washing yeah. the clothes. So them, that, that was very hard. Mm. Were they wearing shoes? Were they bare feet? How was that? No, they were shoes. They were wearing no, shoes. No, they always wore shoes. They, I never saw anybody barefoot anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah, but they were touching the soil, I mean, every single day because and they how, were farmers. How about, uh, we've heard about some people going to the water to bathe, to get better from back pain and... Yeah, you know, they, 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 they did a lot of uh, early, early morning when they had a chance or in the afternoon when they came back from their chores, from the farms, they went down to the river and bathed in a very, very cold water. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was cold water. I mean, imagine, it's mountain water. Yeah, they did that. They did that. It yeah. does wake up the immune system. Oh, you know, we talk about Tumo. That's not for me, that. brother. <laughs> <laughs> no. But anyway, yes, they did that. They did that. Or Mrs. But uh, the, the women, the women brought, the women bore most of the brunt of the heavy work huh. because okay. the, the men went to work and they brought the corn or they brought the peas or they brought the beans they had to be shelled, they had to be this clean and the women did all that, the women made all the tamales, all the humitas they killed the chicken, they made the soup so they, they brought the brunt of the heavy work and mm. they did the washing so the men did most of uh, was just cultivating, cleaning, cleaning the, the weeds and planting, the women didn't do that. How about um, gender relationship? Uh, was were men very gathered together? Were they singing together when they were working in the fields? No, no, uh, no not really. How about the women? Did they have no. good friendships among themselves? How was it? Yeah, because of the church. Right. Because of their uh, of their Catholic faith, the women had more of a social life than the men did. Mm -hmm. The men. They worked, they went to sleep, they worked, they worked, they went to sleep, and then on Sunday they... Okay. And different generations were living in the same house. I mean, like, uh, yeah. a man who would have his, his, his parents yeah, and his, a, his, yeah, his another, children. Yeah, there was another problem because there wasn't enough space. Yeah. And there were problems. There were problems. So they were taking care of their elderly, always, I mean, the, the Well, at that, time, at that time, the elderly took care of themselves. You know, because mm -hmm. they, were, they were in such good physical shape, they were very good. You know, the eyesight was good, everything was good. But uh, their, their, their reduced space in their dwellings, it was a problem. Okay. Because they didn't have that space, so the son, when it gets to be 10, 11 years old, they made their own adobe, so they made an extension to the house. So. Okay.